Hello, welcome to this tutorial on how to do some Lightroom 4 edits. Apologies, I'll try and be as good as, as clear as I can. I have 15 minutes. How on earth you can do it in 15 minutes, I do not know. It normally takes me about 20 minutes, 25 minutes to do an edit. I'm now talking, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Right, okay, I would open Lightroom 4 once I've uploaded my images off of my card on my, um, on my camera. Once they're uploaded, then they'll come to they'll come out like this on the date. Once I've chosen which ones I want to download, I normally choose them all, download them all, and then I'll go through them. So I'm going to choose one from this date um, here. Uh, once you've selected it, scroll to the bottom, then you see all the images come up at the bottom. I'll scroll along to an image that I've chosen already that I'm going to edit. Uh, this is from my shoot down in London, thanks to Pat love and life images on Instagram for uh, inviting me down here and showing me around London and some good places to take pictures. He found this location here overlooking Canary Wharf at night. I wanted always to take a shot like this. Finally found this location to do so uh, and they've come out uh, pretty, pretty good. So I'm very pleased. But as you can see, it's slightly underexposed and I want to just add a little bit more to this image to make it a lot better. Now I'll go as quick as I can, uh, I'll miss some stuff out which I would normally take more time in but obviously I ain't got the time to do it so what I'll, um, if I do forget something then please just let me know and I'll try and give you the answer to that. Okay, it opens up in library, what you want to then do is press develop. Now before going to develop, if you go into library it tells you all here the settings that I used on my camera but we'll do this just for purely editing. Let's have a look. Go into develop. The sliders come up on the right hand side, which is all what I use. Never use anything on the left apart from the history. Um, there are presets, but I don't use them. Never use them. Always just use how I feel at the time. Right, okay, so there it is. Uh, I'll go straight down to exposure. I just want to expose it slightly. If it's slightly underexposed, that's about, that's about right there. I could always change that later. Um, because I was on an uneven surface, it has gone at an angle, so I need to use the crop overlay now to then straighten it. So if you click the crop overlay, there's an angle tool here. I'll use this spirit level at one point for the horizon. Click, go all the way along the horizon from the angle that it's at, try and stay as straight as possible. Let go, and then it will correct it to where it looks straight. Because I'm at a slight angle looking over at this, it does go off a little bit, so I want to just change that manually. So I'll do that myself by just using this slider. I think that looks a bit better to the eye. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I've missed that a little bit, not, but not to worry. Okay, done there. Okay, I want to add a bit of blueness to this sky because I do like it a little bit more blue. So I'll, I'll add some blue here. Um, it changes the whole of the picture. I'm going to bring that down a tad. I like that. And now we just want to change the top half of this picture so I'm going to use now a graduated filter the more you drag out the more of a soft filter it is and the more you go closer the more of a hard filter it is so I've started from the top I've dragged down and now this half from wherever this line is is going to change so I'm going to take it all the way down to the bottom of the building it's just above the water I'm going to move them closer together to have more of a hard grad and go to about there I'm now going to make it brighter, expose it a little bit more, and I'm going to also make it bluer to bring out that blueness of the sky that I saw when I was there. And it also adds a little bit more to the image like that. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, contrast, it is dark, so we'll, we'll slight minus on the contrast. The highlights, which is the lights, um, we'll have a little bit of the city lights going there. Shadows. Uh, I'm going to move the shadows up slightly. Clarity, uh, I always go a little bit minus, which does make it blurred, but it also makes it a bit more of a smoother image, believe it or not. Add a bit more saturation. Uh, with the clarity, the more you go up, the more it makes more of a HDR look. Um, okay, so this is the menu that's come up for just this filter half here. So I'll, I'm quite happy with that. I'll press done, and now that's that half that's changed. I've got the stars here which I don't like because it's a long exposure, they're, they're moving. So if you use the spot removal tool, uh, if I zoom in by pressing command and plus or control and plus, if you're on a PC, I'm just gonna do one just to show you what it does. 
Uh, you can scroll up and down with your mouse or using this slider to cover the area. This is the area that I want to um, I want to disappear. So if I click on that area, I'm on clone now. So whatever I click, that's the area I want to disappear. And wherever I go now with this, it will clone whatever this circle is. So if I go over to here, it will clone whatever's in that and you know wherever it will go, which is great to get rid of it. But because it's dark and it's slightly shading constantly, you get that circle come up there um, and it can go darker. So you've got to go uh, horizontal to it, which you'll see it's disappeared there. Or say if I went up here and it is darker, you can use the heal tool, which will then heal this area to make it blend into this area around the outside of the circle. Like it's done there, gone. So that's just that star. I would normally do them to all of these stars and my sky would be plastered with little circles. Um, so if I zoom in now, I'll show you what the little circles will look like. So I'll do, say I do this one, I'll come out and there's all the little circles and you normally get loads of these from when I've done all the stars. So press done, they disappear and so have the stars, so it blends in nicely. So back to these sliders on the right hand side, this is now controlling the whole of the image. So if I go up contrast, it obviously goes darker, because it is darker on a bit of a minus contrast, just to take some of that darkness out. Bring up the highlights a little bit more from the city lights, the shadows, any shadows that are in there, I want a little bit more shadows. Um, yeah, that looks good. The white, it'll bring up the white of the image, make it brighter just on the white side and the same with the blacks. The blacks will be lighter if you bring up the blacks and darker you take them down, just the blacks of an image. So yeah, so like that. Uh, clarity, I'm gonna take down the clarity a little bit again. Adds nicely to the long exposure that I've created. Add some vibrance to the, to the image. Always like a bit of vibrance to a colorful image. Add a little bit more saturation. Adds more color and um, go to the the tone curve, which you will again with the highlights of the lights. Uh, I'm going to just go a little bit plus, probably a plus two or three. Yeah, the lights just lighten it up a little bit more. Darks about right there again with the shadows. Yeah, I'm plus one there. Down to the colour levels, now you can choose these different colour levels, so we've got a lot of blue here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the blue a little bit darker, a little bit more saturation on the blue, and I'll make it a bit lighter as well, uh, which looks good there. Um, you, so you can change any of these if you want, so I mean this is a little bit orange or yellow here, so if I take that down, that would make that go darker, desaturate that. Um, but because we've got orange up here as well, we don't want to take all of it away. But if you wanted to change that, you can easily use again the filter, drag on the filter from the bottom up, which will do this half of the picture. And then you can use this sub menu that comes up for this filter. And you can say desaturate that, or you can bring that down, change the angle slightly. And again, you'll just do this half of the picture. About there. That looks okay. Um, and when you press done, just make sure you haven't got a line going all the way along, which I've done a couple of times before by mistake. Uh, okay, yeah, so I've done that. I've changed the colors that I want to change. I've now, I don't, I don't mess around the split toning. I do slight little bit on, on this, on the sharpening, make it a little bit more sharper, add a bit more detail, mask some of it that it creates, creates little tiny little specks, so I just want to mask it slightly. Uh, there might be a little bit of noise down here to the corners, so just to make sure, I mean you can move this around, or you can cl click on this to then wherever you want where this crosshairs goes, you can then see, um, so I'm just going to, a little bit of noise there, just going to knock a little bit of it out. If you do too much, it will go blurry. A uh, bit more colour, whatever colours are mixing together, it will make this slider, it will make it just one colour. Add a detail. Uh, this is fantastic. I always check this, no matter what image I do, but even more so in long exposures. 
if you look closely here you can see there's a um, like a, a green line going down there there's, there's a little bit of green going around here um, but watch this green line what yeah watch this green line here and these little bits of green around here so remove the chromatic aberration if I check that bang disappeared perfect that's that gone a lot more cleaner and crisper I'll zoom out um, again I don't mess around with any of these you can play around with them but I don't as as my images go you can make them a little bit um, freaky with some of these image with some of these sliders but I ain't got time to show you them now a vignette if you want I'll do like a vignette on a, on an image um, but as this long exposure goes in at night time uh, I don't really think it needs one um, maybe that that do not too bad okay and that's my image now that I would probably post now to uh, any forums that allow landscapes I might change the landscape bring it a little bit closer down um, by using by using this I can then drag in that it's locked at the moment so I can unlock it and I can drag it down to where I want um, you'll see what it looks like up there to make it more of a landscape um, look uh, which is fantastic or for Instagram purposes I'll use a one times one this is what I've got up here I just want to move it to see how where it looks better I like these lights on the water so yeah I like that uh, if I press done there it is that's the finished obviously I would do more up here um, if you go down to this Y and Y you see the before and after so there's the before and there's the after such a big difference all from Lightroom it's a fantastic software if you haven't got Lightroom I really recommend that you get it it's so much easier to control than Photoshop you can do more in Photoshop and it's a fantastic app, uh, software but for just pure editing images to colors and darkness and shades and even black and white images make it black and white and change it um, it's perfect I love it I can't fault it I really can't uh, and it's what I use on 99% of my images and it's a must for all you amateur photographers out there and professional to get this software it is it is the dogs um, so I'll go back to the original picture um, yeah really really happy the way it's turned out I said I'll do a little bit more to it um, but for a tutorial purpose I hope this has been beneficial I'm so sorry that it is quite fast because of the 15 minutes limit that we have on YouTube um, please if you like the video press the like button subscribe if you have any more ideas for any more videos that you want me to do just drop me a line let me know and I'll do my best to create one please check me out on Instagram which is uh, my Instagram username which is uh, s pb underscore photography it's the same on tada and on 500px i'm on Flickr sb underscore photography 2012 and also check out my website burn photography dot burn photography dot co dot uk excuse me yeah burn photography dot co dot uk um and thank you very much for watching it's New Year tomorrow, so for this point, Happy New Year to everybody. It's 2013 tomorrow. If you do look at this later on in the year, it was a fantastic year. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Uh, take care, everybody. Ta-da.